Hello and welcome to a back to school edition of AA Computers and Technology. Today I thought it would be appropriate to uh, take a look at a affordable student laptop. Right here I have the Dell Inspiron 15 student laptop and we are going to take a closer look at this laptop today so stay tuned. So first I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the features and specifications of this laptop then we will go ahead and boot into Windows 8 and run some programs and games just so I can show you guys the capabilities of this uh, nice little student laptop. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the body of this computer. As you can see from my HD images, um, the computer is composed of all plastic. The entire outer case is composed of a nice, um, pretty strong ABS plastic. Now as you can see as I am scrolling over the uh, top panel of the computer there's a nice texture to the plastic both for looks and for grips so uh, when you grab onto it it doesn't slip out of your hand and it looks pretty cool at the same time. And right in the center of the laptop you can see the Dell logo which adds a nice little flair to the look of this laptop computer. Now the front of this laptop is pretty plain as you can see there are four status LED indicators. One is for power, one is for the hard drive, one is for the battery, and one is for Wi-Fi. Um, you can also see a 4-in-1 card reader, and that's about it. Now on the left side of this laptop, you can see all of our various interfaces. There are three USB ports. These are USB 3.0 ports, one Ethernet port, one HDMI port. Of course, there is a port for the power jack and a headphone jack as well. And uh, you can see that the CPU outtake vent is also on the left side of the computer. Now on the right side of the laptop you can see one USB 3.0 port and a major issue because this computer does not have a DVD, CD, or Blu-ray drive installed in it. If you want to um, read portable media such as a CD or DVD or even a Blu-ray disc, you are going to have to buy an external drive which is really annoying for me. Some people don't care but uh, I prefer to have a drive already installed inside the laptop. Now I'm sure you can go out and also buy a slimline drive uh, and install it into this laptop because I know some particular models of this laptop already have a drive installed but this model does not which is really annoying for me. So I went ahead and switched back to a good old-fashioned video and as you can see we are staring at the bottom of the laptop right now and I already took the liberty of pulling the battery out so you guys can check that out. It is a 14.8 volt 2.8 amp hour battery. Um, on the Dell website they advertise this laptop of getting an average battery life of about six hours but in reality it's only about three to four hours um, depending on how heavily you're using the laptop. Also on the bottom of the laptop we can see our two speaker grills right here and then there's a little compartment that looks like it will give us access to the RAM. You know what? Why not? Let's go ahead and crack that open. Oh, look at that. Well, that panel gives us access to the hard drive, the RAM, and the CMOS battery. Isn't that convenient? So look at that. That's one stick of 4GB DDR3 RAM uh, running at, I believe, 1600 MHz. And there is a space for another stick, so you could have a total of 8GB of RAM in this system. There is our 5400 RPM hard drive. This is a 320GB hard drive. And then you can see our CMOS battery all the way to the left over here. Now as far as the external goes, I believe I have touched on everything. I'm going to go ahead and throw this laptop back together, boot it up into Windows 8, and we can test out how well this laptop performs. Now while I was putting the laptop back together, I realized how much stuff I actually forgot to mention during the external review of this laptop. Like dimensions for example, uh, this laptop is approximately approximately 15 inches wide and 10 inches across. When we open the laptop, we can see our 15.6 inch display, if I can get the camera up there, Durr. and uh, you can see that it is not uh, glare resistant there is a lot of glare on that screen which is really annoying I hope it's not there when we turn it on or maybe uh, I can angle it a different way or something like that you can also see a webcam which is covered by tape there you go there's your webcam had to uncover it 
And I forgot to mention, this isn't actually my laptop. This is my sister's laptop, and it has been through a long-term test. I bought this back during uh, Black Friday last year. Um, I believe the Black Friday price was around $150, $160, uh, because this laptop normally sells for around $250. So it was uh, definitely a great bargain. Um, especially for them because they didn't need much they just wanted something to do word processing on play their little uh, you know you know like eight-year-old games um, and stuff like that so uh, and this fit the price tag and the fit uh, what they needed it for so that's why we bought this laptop also one more little thing there is a tiny tiny little hole for the microphone right next to the webcam so this computer has both a webcam and a built-in microphone Moving down to the keyboard, we can see our very large trackpad, which is a very nice feature of this laptop. Um, I hate laptops that have tiny trackpads because it's just a pain um, to keep having to move your finger over it over and over and over again. This is a really nice feature, um, especially on a student laptop where you're going to need to scroll through things fast. The Intel logo sticker is right there because this computer has a Intel 4th generation Celeron in it. Um, I believe it's a dual core processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. I will confirm that when we go into the BIOS. There is our little, um, I guess you can say specification card from Dell. It doesn't tell us much. And of course you can see that. So let me change the focus. So here's a uh, closer look at the information pane. Um, we can see we have a multi-touch gesture touchpad, 15.6 inch HD display. Um, I already showed you the USB ports. If I can move it down a little bit more, we can see this computer has built-in Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth. Um, that's not important. And uh, Waze Max Audio for our uh, audio. <laughs> now the keyboard is a full-size keyboard complete with a number pad all the way to the right here. Um, you can see there's a nice glossy backdrop behind the keys. Um, and as far as quality goes, it's not one of the best keyboards I've used, but it's not one of the worst either. It, find, it falls in that uh, area in between the two. Um, so. You know, you, you type on the keys, it doesn't feel like the keys are going to break or anything. They, they feel fine, but then again, they don't feel like they're going to last millions and millions of words either. Um, so that's one thing to watch out for. The keyboard doesn't feel awesome, but at the same time, it feels sufficient for a student laptop, especially one within this price range. Now you can see another Dell logo right here. Uh, along with our power button all the way to the left, which I'm going to press in just a minute after we talk about uh, the quality of the uh, case itself. How does the case feel? How does the laptop feel when you're holding it? And the answer to that question is it feels okay. It does. It does. I mean, for a $250 laptop, this thing feels fine. I mean, it's not ThinkPad quality. If you've ever held an IBM ThinkPad, especially the older ones, the plastic on those things, it's, it's like a rock. If you threw it at someone, it would kill them. It is solid. This thing, if you threw it at someone, it would it would crack when it fell. I mean, uh, it's it's durable, but it's not, you know, throw it off a roof and turn it on durable. If I flex it with my hands, it doesn't bend that much or anything. I don't feel like I can rip it apart. Um, but probably if I dropped it from five feet, you know, about this height from this table, which I'm not gonna do, um, it, the, the plastic would probably end up cracking. I'm not gonna try that because this isn't my laptop. That would be absolutely mean to do um, but as far as large falls I don't think it would survive you know small falls like this fine it'll, it'll be fine I'll turn it on hopefully and <laughs> it'll be fine but once again anything above you know four or five feet it's not gonna survive that well it's gonna crack <laughs> so enough with uh, throwing laptops at people let's go ahead and power this thing on so I tried to improve the uh, glare on the screen, but uh, as you can see, there's still a significant amount still there, so hopefully when we uh, actually get windows up, you won't be able to notice it since the backlight will be on. Uh, let me get into the BIOS, 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 no, I didn't do it in time. Let's try again. <laughs> Come on, come on. There you go. And as of now, we are going into the BIOS of this computer. And here we are. Look, our system specifications. The exact model number of this laptop is the Inspiron 3512. Um, this laptop contains the Intel Celeron 
dual core processor running at 1.6 gigahertz. This is not a hyper-threaded processor, which is nice. It's a true dual core processor. I'm not going to go on a hyper-threading rant again. I mean, I, I've done that in so many videos. <laughs> uh, we have 32 kilobytes of level 1 cache, uh, 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache, and uh, 2 megabytes of level 3 cache. We have a 5200 RPM, 320 gigabyte Western digital hard drive. As I said earlier, we have four gigabytes of DDR3 memory running at 1,600 megahertz. So I believe I was right on the uh, earlier system specifications I was talking about. All right, so that's enough specifications for us right now. Let's go ahead and boot into Windows 8 and the focus on this camera is awful. Hopefully that will uh, clear up when we boot into Windows 8. So directly from the BIOS, let's see how long it takes exactly. I'm going to get my timer out and uh, Time to boot time, because I'm curious. So during my last boot attempt, I believe there might have been an error because it took approximately 55 seconds for this computer to boot up, which is kind of uncharacteristic of it, because usually when I use it, it takes about 10 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, shoot another clip just to ensure that that wasn't some kind of uh, accident the first time. I think my sister might have shut it down improperly. Um, before I used it, and therefore Windows did not want to boot up properly. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my timer once again, and see how long it will take for this computer to boot up. And if you guys can't tell, I am using a, a standard definition camera right now. So resolution's uh, a bit low, but it should serve its use. There we go. Timer is started, and let's see how long it takes to boot to the lock screen. Yeah, so first time, there's definitely some sort of error, and I'm going to have to edit a whole bunch of clips in this video now. Um, but it only took about 8 seconds for this computer to boot up to the lock screen, so that's great. Boot time is uh, really great on this computer. So uh, we are at the desktop right now. I just went on a rant about Windows 8, which I'm going to edit out of the video because I know I'm going to get a lot of dislikes for that because um, a lot of people do like Windows 8, but I don't. So uh, <laughs> the last thing I want to do is make a lot of people angry <laughs> during this video. So since this is a student laptop, the first thing I'm going to do is demonstrate some student programs running on this laptop, such as Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, things of that nature. First off, let's open up Microsoft Word. 2010. I don't think I've activated this yet. Oh, maybe. Oh, no, I haven't. <laughs> this is my sister's laptop, so I really don't stay on top of it, but I need to activate this version of 2010. But as you can see, it functions fine. Um, you know, we're not getting any noticeable lag when I drag the mouse over icons or anything. I can, you know, type words. That works great. Load it up fast. No, notice, no noticeable uh, issues. Let's go ahead and open up Microsoft PowerPoint 2010 as well. There we go. Activation failed because I did not activate you. But as you can see, uh, PowerPoint opens up and works just fine. There's no noticeable lack or anything. I can drag that box around. Woo! So Microsoft PowerPoint works fine on this computer. And I'm going to try one more Office program. Let's go ahead and open up. Uh, Excel. Ta-da! And Excel works fine. And since this computer has 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, I can have all these programs open at the same time. Look at this. Wee, PowerPoint is open. And then I can have Word open over here. And if I had another monitor, which uh, I, this computer can uh, have two monitors because there is an external HDMI port. So I could have a monitor here and then have another external monitor over here uh, for increased productivity. So that would be great if, uh, if you have an extra monitor, you can hook, up, hook it up and then uh, have two monitors, dual monitor action going on there. So uh, I've demonstrated our student programs. Why don't I go ahead and uh, demonstrate a few more? I think Adobe Dreamweaver would be good and maybe even uh, Photoshop. So let me go find those. I have some portable versions somewhere. Now here is Adobe Dreamweaver CS6 running on this computer, um, and I still have all the previous applications open that we were using, so let's see how much RAM um, we are eating up right now. Performance, memory, so we're using about uh, 1.6 gigabytes out of the 4 gigabytes of uh, memory we have, so 
uh, according to task manager that's approximately 41 percent so we are good on ram right now let's see how many applications we can open <laughs> just out of curiosity i believe i have a portable version of photoshop 2 laying around somewhere if i can find it so give me a sec ah uh, sorry guys i lied about the photoshop thing i couldn't find it i went through like 10 flash drives and it wasn't on any of them so i gave up so let's go ahead and uh, actually close out all these programs because next, yep, there's another error. It's just it's just a portable version of this. There's always errors with this. Anyway, so I'm going to need all of the RAM because next we are going to do uh, something else that's very important to students. Very important to students. Um, we're gonna open up some games, <laughs> and uh, even though the uh, this computer does have integrated Intel graphics. Um, it still can do some light gaming, um, even with recent games. Um, I have uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag on this. I think there's Amnesia, Portal, um, Goat Simulator, <laughs> and uh, Skyrim. You know what, let's go ahead and launch Skyrim. And I have my Xbox controller hooked up. Somewhere over here. Right here. Let's launch it. Turn the volume up. And of course the graphic settings are like ultra low on this. Options. Yeah. Now Intel RHD graphics. Um, what are our advanced settings? Yeah, so everything's set to low. Actually, I set the texture quality to medium. Um, but that's really the only thing that's not on low is the texture quality. View distances are all set to minimum. And uh, all of our water reflections are turned off. All the anti-analyzing is turned off. Uh, all of our filtering is turned off, and our resolution is only 1,266 by 768, so... I mean, you can play it, but is it going to be enjoyable? Well, that depends uh, on what kind of quality you prefer. Ooh, look, you can see me in that awful glare. My sister's been playing this, so I don't know what she's been doing, but uh, let's go ahead and continue where she left off. Let me turn off the light, maybe we can get a better view. So right now it feels like we're getting about 25 frames per second on uh, pretty much all low graphic settings. It's actually not bad, but it doesn't look great. <laughs> it's playable, it's definitely playable. Alright, so that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. Alright, so let's go ahead and open up another pretty taxing game, which is uh, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Um, I'm not going to open up Assassin's Creed Black Flag just because of loading times on that. Um, it takes, it literally takes 7 minutes just to open the game on this computer. It runs, but it's definitely not enjoyable while playing it. My sister's fine with it, I cannot take it. It, it gets like 10 frames per second, ah, it just makes me sick, I can't play it like that. Turn that down. It's gonna come out awful on this camera. There we go. So this game's definitely playable. I'm um, getting around probably a little bit under 20 frames per second right now. 
especially with stuff blowing up. So that's it for Far Cry 3, let's go ahead and uh, run one more game. Alright, so for our final game, let's go ahead and check out a classic. Let's open up Portal. So let's check out our uh, video settings. Resolution's 1024 by uh, 768. Let me lower the volume on this. We're in uh, full screen mode. Um, let's check out advanced settings. And uh, texture detail set to high, shader details set to high, um, shadow detail set to medium. We have anti anti aliasing on. Um, we have filtering on, trilinear. Um, actually, our graphic settings aren't bad right now. And it looks like as the camera is panning, we're getting around 30 frames per second on this. So not bad at all. Let's go ahead and try to play the actual game though. Wow, that's not bad. Yeah, definitely around, uh, I would have to say, gosh, 30 frames, a good 30 frames per second. And trying to play this with a trackpad is, uh, painful. <laughs> Very hard to do. Please place the weighted storage cube on the 1500 megawatt Archer Science Heavy Duty Super Colliding Super Button. Oops. Oh man, I gotta wait for a portal. There we go. Alright, so the whole point of this wasn't gameplay, I just wanted to demonstrate how the game ran. So, uh, that's enough of this. Let's go ahead and exit back out to the desktop. Now, a nice thing about this laptop is that when you unplug it and switch over to the battery, there is no major performance decrease. On a lot of higher-end laptops, that is the case. When you unplug it, you'll lose a lot of performance. Um, for example, on my uh, Asus G75 gaming PC, I'll play Diablo 3. Uh, I'll get about 40 frames per second with the power supply plugged into the laptop. When I unplug the, lab the power supply from the laptop, that frame rate instantly drops to about 25 frames per second. Um, and that is a major, major performance decrease. At this laptop, that does not happen, which is really nice. So I'm going to demo two more things before I end this video. The first thing I am going to uh, open up Internet Explorer and we'll browse around some web pages to see how it performs. And then I'm going to play a uh, HD video on this computer just to show you guys um, that it is capable of doing so. So let's go ahead and open up Internet Explorer. Yes, uh, my sister does use Internet Explorer on this computer. I do not know why. I prefer Chrome. There we go, we are on Google. Let me see how that looks on the camera. That looks fine. Um, let's search something, um, I don't know, YouTube? Yeah, let's go on YouTube and go ahead and, and play a HD video. I'm going to look up my channel. And while I'm going through all this, you can check out the load times. Let's scroll down. Is the scrolling smooth? Well, yeah, pretty smooth. Definitely not bad. And all my videos are HD quality, so let's go ahead and check one out and play it back in HD. Let's go ahead and set that to uh, 180p. Oh, advertising. So I'm fed up with doing my AP summer assignments. I spent like three hours on those today And I'm just zoning out so I decided I would go ahead and make a video And if you guys have been checking my website, you know that this computer is on there in the new arrival section And this is the gateway 832 GM and I haven't mentioned anything about the audio so far But as far as my ears can tell I don't know about some of your audio files um, But my ears to my ears the audio sounds absolutely fine I mean, it's it's not crystal clear, 
Um, but there's no noticeable static or anything, especially when playing games. Um, there's a little bit of distortion just for my video, um, because my audio isn't great. I mean, I'm using the built-in microphone with the camera. So, there's okay. always going to be some distortion. Check out Ubuntu. Alright, here's a little bit more information. Uh, some things that we didn't see for before. Um, the system bus is set at... So overall, this is a pretty good little laptop for the price. It can do everything a student needs to do, plus on top of that, it can do a little light gaming, which is great. And of course, I'm going to post a uh, little annotation animation for you uh, to sum everything up. So that's about it for this video. I hope this video has answered all of your questions, but if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can post one in the comments section and I will try to get back to you or someone from the community will get back to you um, to help you out. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe. Please do not forget to like this video. I mean, I really do base my, uh, my success off my ratings. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like something about it, don't just dislike it, leave a comment uh, telling why, because I always appreciate critique. And I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this review. Thank you for watching.